This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 56, Play Ball, the weekly wish list. This week, we say goodbye to three series whose final volumes were released. Otomen Volume 18 brings to a close the story of Asuka and his fellow Otomen. I enjoyed the beginning of the series and look forward to reading more. Siren is an action title that started in Shonen Jump just before it went online, but didn't follow. Volume 16 ends Agea's battle to save his friends and the world. I like Siren well enough, just not enough to follow it. I love the first volume of Strobe Edge and have several more waiting to be read. Volume 10 ends this wonderful story of first love and discovering yourself. In the news, two mangaka known in the U.S. are starting up new titles in Japan. Nobuhiro Watsuki will be launching a new Rurouni Kenshin spin-off title after the villain from the second story arc of the original series, Shishio Makoto. Watsuki continues to ride the nostalgia wave as two more live-action movies based on his Rurouni Kenshin manga are scheduled to come out for summer of this year. And his new series, titled Aku no Kyoku, Record of Evil, is meant to accompany them. More information is to come in the July issue of Square Jump. I hope this works out better than his reboot with Restoration. I did like Shishio as a villain. He was well-rounded with realistic motivations. Emma Toyama is launching a new series at the end of this month. She is known here in the U.S. for Missions of Love, I Am Here, and the soon-to-be-released Manga Dogs from Kodansha Comics. This new series, Watanuki-san ni Boku ga Tarinai, is a romantic comedy about fastidious high school student Reira Watanuki. One day, she disguises herself as lovable male classmate student Owaru Sangatsu. She has new challenges to face as she explores life from a different perspective. I've enjoyed Missions of Love. I want to check out I Am Here, and Manga Dogs looks like it'll be a fun series, too. This new series will hopefully be one to look forward to. Manga Box has been busy adding manga to their apps. I mentioned a few of them back in episode 52. I liked Oh God, Dear God, by the way, and I'm following it now. Some other new titles that have popped up that I'm following now are Iyami no Kami, Plague Goddess, Mission in the South, The Host Man, and Red Blood, Red Legacy. I am really enjoying the titles that are popping up in Manga Box, especially the ones that aren't by known names or titles. It's been a fun experiment, and I may even buy some of these titles if and when they become available as ebooks, assuming they are priced reasonably and aren't difficult to purchase. Crunchy Roll Corner. Usually, I highlight news stories about things I think people will be interested in and like. This time, I have to warn people off. Crunchy Roll has announced new motion comic manga 2.5 versions of The Mythical Detective Loki and Karasuma Kyoko no Jinkembo. I had seen the Manga 2.5 thing before, but I didn't give it any mind. The announcement of these two titles intrigued me enough to check out the trailers. Yeah. The whole motion manga idea is not a good one. The trailers show scenes from the titles colorized, with the characters' mouths flapping and their eyes blinking. Awkward. Seeing them walk? Even worse. And don't even get me started on the voice acting. To call it acting would be an injustice to even the worst dubs of the 70s and 80s. This thing just looks bad all around. It's available to premium subscribers now and to free subscribers after a month. Just trust me, though, and give these a very wide berth. The Top 10 Department May is Manga Month, and Viz's celebration has hit the top 10 digital manga list. For the week of April 29, 2014, the top three titles have returned from the distant past. Naruto Volume 1 returns to come in at number 1. One Piece Volume 1 takes the number 2 spot, while Bleach Volume 1 falls in at number 3. Naruto Volume 65 returns us to the present as it falls 2 to number 4, while One Punch Man Volume 2 moves up 2 to number 5. There is a double dose of Whistle as Volume 17 comes in at number 6, and is followed by Volume 18 at number 7. Boys Over Flowers Volume 34 debuts at number 8, Chibi Vampire Volume 3 comes in at number 9, and Knights of the Zodiac Volume 25 ends the list at number 10. To celebrate Manga Month, Viz has made the number 1 volumes of One Piece and Naruto 199, while Bleach only got that pricing for one day. 
It obviously has had effect, as all three took the top three spots, but their order also shows not just the effect of the sale, but also their rank in popularity. Naruto continues to stand on top, whether it's an old or new volume. One Piece holds in second, and Bleach, crippled by the one day only, still made it into third. There are still a lot of people out there to get into these titles. At the New York Times bestseller list, Kodansha's Titans are rampaging again. For the week ending May 3rd, 2014, it's no surprise what is on top. Attack on Titan Volume 12 debuts at number 1. Naruto Volume 65 moves up to to number 2, as Wolf Children, Ame, and Yuki charge up 4 to number 3. Attack on Titan Volume 1 moves down 1 to number 4, while Fairy Tale Volume 37 moves up 1 to number 5. Attack on Titan Volume 10 returns at number 6, as does Attack on Titan Volume 2 to number 7. Devil and Realist Volume 1 moves up 1 to number 8. Sword Art Online, Einkrad Volume 1 falls the most. 7 spots to number 9, and Attack on Titan Volume 4 returns to end the list at number 10. Wow! A new Attack on Titan volume comes out, and it not only takes a top spot, it brings all of its friends along to the party. Last week there were two Titans on the list. This week there are five. If that isn't total domination, I don't know what it is. Well, if the whole list was Titan, then that would be world domination. Seven Seas does well with Devil and Realist surviving the Titan onslaught, and it's impressive that Wolf Children has been on the list five weeks straight now. Play ball! I've never been a big sports fan. I enjoyed baseball when I was growing up. My father loved it, so we would watch games on TV or go to Anaheim Stadium and watch the California Angels play, even though my father was a Dodgers fan. L.A. was too much of a drive compared to the Angels just being down the street. But as I got older, I drifted away and never got into football or basketball as my geeky interests took precedent. So I never thought I would like sports manga. I know people were always saying you don't have to like or know the sport to enjoy the manga, but I was still reluctant, even when people kept going on about titles like Cross Game and Slam Dunk. So when I finally tried these two titles out, I certainly didn't disagree with the proponents, but I still can't say they're titles I'd follow regularly. Slam Dunk is by... Takehiko Inoue, the creator of the samurai epic Vagabond and the more adult basketball title Real. Even though he's got lots of popular titles under his belt, none can top the popularity of Slam Dunk. This series from the 1990s swept Japan and helped make basketball popular there. It follows Hanamichi Sakurai, a first-year high school student with a crush on Haruko Akagi, the sister of Takinori Akage, captain of Shohoku's basketball team. Hanamichi is tall and a bit of a punk when the series starts. He thinks he can impress Haruko if he joins the basketball team. And while he does show an aptitude for it, he has a lot of work to do before Haruko will be impressed. Hanamichi is as dumb as he is stubborn and takes on the challenge to become a great player and do slam dunks. While Inoue fills his title with relationships and training expected for a shonen title, it's the games that make this such a riveting title. They are full of action and tension and leave you on the edge of your seat. You don't have to know what a center does or what being a forward means, because in the heat of the game, it doesn't matter. All throughout the game, we are in the players' heads, seeing what they are thinking and feeling what they are feeling. The games get so intense that you cannot put the book down and just have to know what Shohoku is going to do next to get out of their current predicament. Shohoku, and Sakurai especially, are shown as the underdogs fighting to make their way up. The characters are dripping with sweat from how hard they are working, and strategy is just as important as running down the court. In a way, packs so much into a volume that a single game can take four volumes or more, but those volumes just fly by that you don't even notice until you hit the end, and you have to do something to get that next volume. I never thought a manga could make me care so much about a game, but Slam Dunk does just that. Cross Game doesn't have that fierce intensity that Slam Dunk does, but it is still a page-turner. This series is by Mitsuru Adachi, a contemporary and rival to Rumiko Takahashi. Cross Game is about Ko Kitamura, whose family owns a sporting goods store. He is friends with Wakabe Tsukishima, whose family owns a batting center and cafe and was born on the same day as him. Wakabe dies tragically in the summer of their fifth grade, but not before telling Ko about a dream she had seeing him pitch in front of a crowd at Koshien. The series follows Ko's attempt to make that dream come true. Adachi handles his gameplay differently. 
There isn't a lot of time spent at the player's head. Instead, it's all shown through gameplay. The intensity on Ko's face when he pitches, the speed that ball flies by at. You can almost hear the sound of the catcher's mitt being hit by the ball with every catch. The rivalry runs strong in the final game of the finals, as the teams are so evenly matched. Both pitchers are amazing, and both teams have players who can hit, so this is less a game about strategies and more about power and speed. The game moves faster, only taking two volumes to complete a 12-inning game of mostly strikeouts and pitches clocked at nearly 100 miles per hour. Even without the drama of the character's internal dialogue, the game is filled with tension from every pitch and every swing of the bat. But that isn't all this volume is about. Adachi balances the action with equal doses of comedy and romance. The scenes never get too bogged down with melodrama or too light from the comedy. It really strikes a perfect balance that keeps you holding your breath through the game, but giving you a chance to breathe in the other scenes. It isn't so nail-biting, but the desire to see Ko succeed, and if he and Aoba, Wakabe's younger sister, will get together, creates a different drive to turn those pages. Slam Dunk and Cross Game are two different titles about two very different games. Both embody the essence of the games they are portraying, either through sweat-dripping drive or quiet and contemplative determination. If you ever thought you couldn't enjoy a sports manga, pick up either of these titles and see yourself proven wrong. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at mangazanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.